This is a problem that uh, has really been cycling from the first George Bush through President Clinton, through President George W., and through Obama, and now is in Trump's inbox. And the difference with how President Clinton and other presidents have handled this and the current president is that you work with your team and you develop a policy that reflects um, our allies, our military generals, our intelligence um, analyses of how these statements are going to impact um, the situation. And here you have a situation where the president is just clearly just making it up as he goes along and trying some bellicose language With because all he due thinks respect, that'll work. I understand that his style is incredibly different compared to the last three presidents we have had. It's not just style and substance. It's, it's not just style and substance. You marry force with diplomacy. You don't just kind of threaten and now force nuclear, without something to back And now to back North it up. Korea has even more advanced nuclear weapons. Right. And it's the most frustrating problem that a president faces. And it's one of the most dangerous that we have. But and you didn't we, tell me why it would not have been a good idea. Make the case. Why did you guys decide? There must have been good reasons. Yeah, they're very good reasons. You get into a military, con well, millions of casualties in the region, um, nuclear uh, explosions from the North Koreans on our troops in South Korea and Japan, well, much less have perhaps They didn't have extensive nuclear weapons back then, right? I mean, I guess the difference is now we're, we're much more worried about a much more advanced nuclear program today than there was back then. There were suspicions they had enough material for two fissile bombs. So... Well, and, and now they probably have more, but right. the... The solution isn't to nuke them. The solution is to have tough diplomacy to try and put that back in the box. The last option is war. But what about just war. bombing the had, abilities to, to, to well, set it's off not the bombs that he, or the it, artillery? We, we've been looking at that since the early 90s. Right. And, so, and, and tell me why, why it hasn't been done. That's what I'm trying to get at. Because that's the, reason it's it the same been, situation as we have today, right? Why not? Uh, it's more dangerous now um, because they have more weapons. You have an extremely erratic leader. Um, and the reason that it hasn't been done is that the complication, first of all, you're not going to get it all. Secondly, it'll just make the North Koreans more determined uh, to develop these. It'll upset the entire region, so we'll lose our alliance in trying to squeeze them. And it could provoke a war and invasion and put our troops in the region at risk. That's why we haven't done so, it. And so, those reasons so let me, still let me, exist. Let me, let me go to the spirit of uh, if, if you don't share the, the idea that that maybe a preemptive attack was a smart thing to do back in the 90s. Is, is there not some truth to the idea that we've kind of kicked this can down the road from one administration to another to another to another, and that incrementally those decisions are why we find ourselves where we are today with a country that has an, a highly unstable uh, dictator in charge with a much more advanced capacity to both create and deliver nuclear weapons? All of that is true, except that the military option, first of all, has always been on the table. Uh, the president said it's locked and loaded. Those have always been ready to go and defend us. We do exercises. We are ready to move at a moment's notice, and we have been for decades. So that's nothing new there. Force has always been an option, but it has always been the last option, not the first. And this comes on the heels of having the toughest sanctions against North Korea ever, taking a billion out of a $3 billion trade relationship with them, with China taking the lead. And that's how you're going to solve this issue. And rather than let that take effect and squeeze the North Koreans and try and get them back from the brink, we're escalating it and using language that uh, President Kim uses in uh, in North Korea. That's not who we are. We need to lead a tough sanctions to squeeze this regime. The military option is always on the table and always has been. There was actually that is a, not Nancy, necessarily I'm, the wisest course. What so, you want to do is try and solve this first through tough sanctions, yeah. and that's what we were doing until this war of words started that has thrown that off kilter. Uh, hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.